The Apostle Paul had spoken before the Areopagus Council in Athens. His doctrine concerning the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ was dismissed, but God had other plans for Paul. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent-makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. I'm here uh, at ancient Corinth, but I'm not exactly inside the park. This is just outside the front gate. There's some steps that go down. And uh, to my, uh, over my left shoulder here is part of a paved road, you will notice. Uh, it actually leads up to the theater complex. And then further on down, there's more buildings. But I wanted you to pay attention to the paved road because in just a moment, I'm going to give you some biblical significance to it. Directly behind me is a pavement, which is, goes alongside the road I showed you earlier. And on this pavement, there is an inscription. It states that the road and the uh, pavement was paid for by Erasmus. Now, Erasmus is mentioned in the letter to the Romans, the 16th chapter, by Paul, which he wrote from Corinth. Erasmus is mentioned as the treasurer of the city. The importance of that is that you remember that God told Paul that he would have many people in Corinth. Certainly, Erasmus was a person of high status, which helped Paul to remain here for 18 months and minister. Archaeologists have been able to recreate an accurate rendering of how Corinth appeared in Paul's day, with the Agora and Temple Complex at its center. These seven columns are all that remains of the Temple to Apollo. It was on a gentle rise just above the Agora for everybody to see, and it must have been a glorious sight when it was in its prime. Of course, it can't compare to the Acrocorinth, the high place in which the temple to Aphrodite was built, just beyond. One of the great problems that the Christians had in Corinth was that the food that was available, quite often the meat, had been sacrificed to the gods. So there was a question on their mind whether they should eat, were free to eat or not. Paul did address that in one of his letters to the Corinthians. Corinth was one of the more important cities of the ancient world. It was located on the narrow land bridge that connected mainland Greece to the Peloponnese. Today, the Corinth Canal bisects the Isthmus, but in Paul's day, they used the Diokos Road. By unloading a ship on one side, they could portage the cargo and ship overland to the other. Days of sailing around the Peloponnese could be saved. Thus, Corinth provided the perfect location and opportunity for the worship of pagan gods, combining the business of trade and the business of idolatry. You know, it's incredible to imagine that I am walking in the very place, in the very footsteps of the Apostle Paul. By the time he arrived in Corinth, he must have been exhausted. Think about it. He had gone to Philippi. In Philippi, he was beaten, thrown in jail. After they released him, he went to Thessaloniki. In Thessaloniki, he was once again rejected and chased out of town. So he went to Athens. In Athens, he was not free to preach the gospel. He had to go before the Areopagus. And the city council rejected the gospel that he was preaching. So finally, he came here to Corinth. And he received a word from the Lord that told him that here he would stay, because God had many people in this city. Now, I don't know if they were already believers. They probably were not. But God already knew who was going to be a believer and who was not. And he had a lot of people planned to enter into the kingdom in Corinth.
This elevated platform is what's known as the Bema. It is the judgment seat. It was here that around the year 50 AD, the Apostle Paul was brought before the proconsul Gallio under the accusation that he was teaching a religion that was unlawful to the Roman Empire. The proconsul Gallio dismissed the case immediately, considering it a matter of religion and not the law. The man who brought Paul to the judgment seat was immediately put upon by the crowd and beaten. Just shows you cannot mess around with God's people. I hope you have found this video to be informative and entertaining. To see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website, videoparables.org.